So Ben, I'd like to hear from you. What are some personal things you learned about employee engagement when you were at your former company? Well, I think oftentimes we forget employees are people. Mm -hmm. And so it's not like a cold business strategy that's clinical. It's got to be very human. And really that, you know, humans are not all that rational, frankly. They're highly emotive creatures. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so just like you would manage a personal relationship, a friendship, or a love relationship, something else, often you have to manage uh, employees in that way. And I think for some reason when you bring humanity back to business, mm -hmm. Uh, you actually get much more solid business and financial results by treating and engaging with people and acknowledging that they are real people and not these little objects or, or, or cogs in your larger corporate wheel. Yeah. Are there any trends that you're noticing? Because personally, I've, I hear a lot about employee engagement when I'm out talking to different people. So what are the big trends right now? Well, there's a couple of things. One is the whole notion of like using PR. This conference is a lot of, you take the world-class principles of public relations, often applied to the market and the brand and customers and channel partners, now applying those same principles and ideas to your own employees, treating them like customers, treating them like people that need to be marketed to, mm -hmm. is a huge trend. And you know, really, so there's so much focus on, on talent acquisition or recruiting. How do we get people to the company? How do we get our brand out there? But then once you come, you don't keep selling them. Right. But just like having a relationship that sustains or renewing a client, you have to kind of keep selling them on their experience or their product or service, mm -hmm. so that's key. I think another trend that I'm also seeing is that there's a lot of focus on like this idea of engagement. And, you know, the economy's improving, there's a lot of folks that have been waiting it out, been kind of risk averse about leaving. A lot of companies are very concerned about talent attrition this year. Mm -hmm. But the focus on engagement is still just this general kind of feel good, and it's not as specific to really say what's going to actually drive that engagement rather than just feel good campaigns. And then how do you actually capture, if you get more engagement, I mean, just having someone stay isn't a big prize. Yeah. I mean, that's, you know, that just means, it just means you paid them, great. Mm -hmm. But actually, you know, getting discretionary effort, essentially more capacity, it'd be like, you know, adding 10 or 20% to your workforce mm -hmm. in terms of capacity without any other expense. How do you capture that capacity and then point it towards your business strategy to produce real results? And if those skills don't really come naturally to a leader, how, how can they learn that? How can they get better at that? I think, you know, your head of HR and then your chief marketing officer need to be in partnership on this mm -hmm. because I think oftentimes in engagement will be in internal communications or in HR or talent or kind of, you know, al almost buried in the organization. I think you need to have those two executives who are hopefully on the executive committee working with the other business managers to have them on the, the hard and the soft skills of employee engagement. And a lot of it starts with really strong leadership and people say that they join companies and they leave managers. Mm -hmm. And so that relationship, you know, the one-on-one -on -one relationship between an employee and their manager is one of the most highly predictive uh, drivers of retention and, and satisfaction for colleagues. Mm -hmm. um, but a lot of it, you know, is just the fundamentals of good management is a, is a key thing. But also a lot of times, I think a lot of engagement programs are about adding something. We're going to do this new thing or this program, this launch, this initiative. In fact, sometimes you need to take things away. Take away programs, take away sign-ins, take away forms, and get things out of the environment. Sometimes employees want less not more yeah. that would create a better environment and so sometimes it's looking at the barriers what gets in the way does the copy machine always get jammed get a new copy machine or get it fixed you know do people need a second monitor or something like that to get their work done more efficiently get them a monitor it can be very very simple things that can help employees perform better because oftentimes they really just want to do their job and if you can just get some of the hassle out of the way they're a lot happier great well thanks so much for sitting down with us and sharing some advice absolutely so, great session today. Thank um, you. I Thank thought you. it was really interesting how you were talking about when you wanted to change your company, a pharmaceutical company, you actually went to Disney. Mm -hmm. What did you see there and what did you learn? Yeah, I think what we learned there is that uh, Disney focuses on uh, what they call the service profit chain, mm -hmm. where they focus on exceptional leadership, engaged employees, and uh, positive customer experiences mm -hmm. leading to business results. And that's really in line with uh, what uh, we strive to do at Lilly Diabetes. Uh, as we strive to bring personal solutions to everyday life for our employees and our patients. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned there was an employee there you saw at Disney that all he does is make popcorn all day. Yes, yes, yes. So <laughs> uh, really interesting. Um, this employee is charged with uh, really providing a good customer experience for any guest that comes onto the Disney property. So, mm -hmm. you know, most people want to um, smell the popcorn when they go to a theme park. And yeah. so uh, this employee is engaged to do that uh, on, a, on a daily basis. And I was struck by uh, the leadership that had to be provided for someone to, you know, make popcorn on a daily basis when the popcorn's not yeah. generally sold there. And he must get hungry. Yes, exactly, <laughs> exactly. So after that experience, what were some practical tips that you took back to your workplace, and how did you change things? Yeah, so at, at, at um, we are really about uh, providing personal solutions for everyday life, and so what we realized that um, while we were providing those solutions for patients, mm -hmm. that uh, it was important for us to provide that personal 
connection with our employees. And so we really did four things. The first one is we changed our work environment. We literally tore down the walls and we have an integrated work uh, environment now. The second thing is we use technology to interact with our employees. So we use things like FaceTime and with the iPad. We changed our technology um, to use instant messaging and things of that nature. Um, we also um, changed the way that we communicated with our employees. So we went from focusing just on the team to the individual. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much. That's great advice.